Okay. Ian, Ian Marlowe from the uh, Globe and Mail. Your first question to the uh, panelists. Hey guys, and in case anyone can't tell, I'm, I'm tweeting, I'm not, I'm not bored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, this is a question directed to everyone here. Uh, in terms of going up against the Goliaths of the world, uh, you've been able to obviously maneuver, you've been able to be more agile, but you've also been able to maybe exploit some of the, um, either the market position or the reputations <laughs> of your rivals. Uh, how have you managed uh, kind of step by step in terms of either designing your products, uh, thinking of marketing strategies? How have you um, used your opponent's size and uh, reputation sort of for your own benefit? You know, I'm gonna reverse the order here and go with Loudon on that one. Uh, well, again, there are two dimensions to eye for eye. As a business, I think what eye for eye has done very, very effectively is work with the customers. And instead of being a supplier of technology, it's been a partner. And it has been, I remember when there was a, a problem we had, it was back in the days when Newbridge was an existing uh, company. And uh, I couldn't reach Michael, I didn't know where he was. And he'd driven all night long and he was parked in the parking lot at Newbridge to go and fix something. And I hope it worked after you fixed it. I, I'm pretty sure it did. But it was a partnership with the, with the clients and, and I'll let Michael talk to that. Okay, well, we'll yeah. And this uh, IP protection, was that uh, instigated by the fact that you guys were getting into these partnerships? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. The, uh, your point, how do you take it, how do you work with the large players in the marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. our, we, our, the technology we built actually enables the large players software, because we're in the software business, to do things that they could never imagine was possible. So what we did is we said, okay, who, in the case of Microsoft, who's the biggest supplier of desktop software out there on the planet? Clearly, it's the guys in Redmond. How do we enable their software to actually do something that the customers want, that Microsoft has a vested interest in not promoting this? In this case, it was open data. And so what we did is we used Microsoft's position in the marketplace to leave us, to allow us to go in. So we rode essentially on their coattails, if you will, to bring our product to market and took advantage uh, of the fact that they were already installed, they were part of the existing infrastructure. And there are companies that we compete against that chose to go solely on their own. We will build everything from scratch to finish, and that's a non-starter because you have to displace an existing competitor. So what you do is you try and do the old jujitsu, karate stuff. How do you l use them to turn themselves over, and which, is, which is what we did. Okay. And then at a certain point, of course, um, from a different dimension, they, they weren't too happy with that. So um, what we had to do was face um, a very large competitor with $40 billion on their balance sheet um, straight on and make a decision. So the first thing you do is you make a decision. And, you know, you look at your partners and you shrug your shoulders and shake hands and decide you're going to move forward and you're going to win. You make a decision. And the second thing you do is you learn a little bit about the media because... Um, it's been fascinating learning, and Melanie Jameson from Get It Done has been piloting that whole program, but you learn about the media. And uh, from what I've seen, the media has been extraordinarily fair to us. And, you know, it's been a great thing for a small company to capitalize on being small, moving fast. It's a bit like, uh, I don't know, a small country, Singapore, battling in, you know, in its region. Um, people understand and support. And, it is the underdog situation. And speaking of underdogs, underdog. then, yeah. Tony, I mean... You started up uh, in an established infrastructure. The telcos are huge. They're behemoths. They had the marketing clout. They had the infrastructure clout. I don't know why you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my suicidal. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes only in the morning. <laughs> um, I think that I'm going to take a little bit different of a, an angle on that. In that, uh, and I talk about this a lot internally. Um, you know, I don't. I don't believe. Well, I mean, the title here is David versus Goliath. I don't actually believe that David can win. <laughs> um, I think that you need to be very surgical and strategic about what battles you fight. Um, and uh, and what I mean specifically by that is, you know, that, like if you look at, the, in my case, the telecom industry, Bell, Telus, and Rogers, Shaw, you know, you can, it, it, as much as they're um, very well-run companies, because of their size, they're, they're going in a certain direction. It's predictable what they're going to do the next three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months. You can watch the investments they're making. And the investments they're making, of course, they need to show their shareholders returns on those investments. 
Uh, for example, Bell just announced an IPTV, I'm not going to promote Bell, but they just announced an IPTV offering. So that, that sets the, the, the tone and the stage for a lot of bundled offerings that Bell will bring in the marketplace. Um, so uh, I pay a lot of attention to what my competitors are doing because they are really like, you know, big tankers in a harbor. And, you know, the harbor's pretty small. And yeah, we're in like a little canoe, <laughs> uh, maybe bigger than a canoe now, but we're, you know, we're still in a very small boat. So we are very much more maneuverable, but if we get backed into a corner, um, there isn't going to be a David and Goliath miracle where we're going to somehow, you know, hit them between the eyes and they're going to, they're going to die. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, so it's very, very, very important that we're very smart <laughs> about the investments we make. And, uh, and part of that is about watching what they're doing because they can't, they cannot turn on a dime. They're, they're going to, they're, they're, they're moving. And yeah, I mean, if, if you see their, the if so, if it's in your market, if you see you if you have a big competitor and you see the ship starting to turn, my advice is, you know, don't don't be there when it gets there. You, you need to be somewhere else, and that may mean if you have a, you know, if you need to make an investment, you need to find a different partner, sell a part of the business, you know, change it, you know, change part of the business, whatever. But uh, don't, I, I don't believe in fighting that that, that kind of battle head on, head on, head on, uh, with somebody that has, you know, 40 billion, or in my case, you know, in aggregate, they're they're obviously entrenched players here in Canada with quad play. Um, voice, video, audio, you know, data, uh, and, and so on. So you're not going to displace them. You have to basically pick your spots, hit them really hard where they can't react, and when they start to react, well, you need to be in a different place. Thank you, Tony. Steve. Uh, as my uh, old man used to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And that's the lesson that we've learned at Mill Street. Um, when we started, we started with three beers, and uh, two were fairly esoteric styles. The Tank House Ale, which is a fairly bitter ale, and our coffee porter. Now, if we just launched with coffee beer, we probably wouldn't be talking with me today because it's it's a not our hottest seller by, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. I, like it, I love it too, but you know you're not going to sit down and drink a case of coffee porter. And, and <laughs> on that note, the organic beer was certainly <laughs> good man. Thank you. <laughs> love this guy. Um, organic beer was something that had not existed in Ontario. There were a few small breweries out west that were doing it. In the U.S., uh, I, again, I allude to craft beer in the U.S., uh, th there were a few fledgling on uh, craft beers doing um, organic, certified mm -hmm. organic beer, but it just didn't exist here. And when we were having uh, our first kid, my wife and I, we, we'd go shopping and, and we'd go to Loblaws and there was organic milk and strawberries, but obviously th it was fairly limited. And in that time, now we have entire aisles dedicated to organic products, organic and now local and sustainability and all these other uh, catchphrases really weren't even that hot six, seven years ago. It's amazing how quickly, with technology, uh, rapidly, people are, are glomming onto this stuff, and it's phenomenal. But go back a few years, make an organic beer that was palatable. It didn't, as my joke was, didn't have twigs floating in it. You know, people were going organic. Well, isn't all beer organic? Well, what's in it? Mud. Like people just didn't know what organic beer was. And as a small company you just don't have the, the resources to compete against the Goliath breweries with you know, multi-billion dollar marketing budgets. So you start slowly, develop a reputation, in our case, you know, go door to door, literally, trying to sell your product. But you also try to find that one demographic that's really going to love your beer. And back then, it was moms, believe it or not. Women loved organic products, and we sold it initially in a small bottle wasn't in the big bottle as of today, uh, because eventually we used to get hate mail as it grew in popularity. People were like, we love your beer, but your bottle is so small, you know? You know? And there's a problem there. So we, we eventually listened to what the public was saying, but initially we took baby steps, but we really tried to pinpoint one product that we thought would really catch people's attention and then still have fun with a vast array of other styles of beer to really build your credibility as a craft brewery and just have fun, you know? That's so that was our strategy.